In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to enter and participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O oh Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, creator of all, you ordered the earth to bring forth life and crowned its goodness by creating the human family. As we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Family, teach us the sanctity of human love, show us the value of family life, and help us to live in peace with all people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the solemnity of the Holy Family, we take the first reading from the book of Sarach. For the Lord honored the father above the children, and he confirmed the right of the mother over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins, and whoever glorifies his mother is like one who lays up treasure. Whoever honors his father will be gladdened by his own children, and when he prays, he will be heard. Whoever glorifies his father will have long life, and whoever obeys the Lord will refresh his mother. O son, help your father in his old age, and do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if he is lacking in understanding, show forbearance. In all your strength do not despise him, for kindness to a father will not be forgotten, and against your sins it will be credited to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the Lord's house all the days of my life. Happy are those who dwell in your house. They never cease to praise you. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on them as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in to one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Truly with you, God, is hidden, the God of Israel, the Savior. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Now when the Magi had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night, and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt have I called my son. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother, and he went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus reigned over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and dwelled in a city called Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christians 
who form families. Being righteous means being morally straight as a family and justifiable in their actions with each other, in their belief in God. And they have established in their home a right understanding with Him. I believe that the solemnity of the whole Holy Family is not just about Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. And it is more than calling upon the godly attributes that Christian's family should have. You know, each family is holy when they strive to manifest the love among each other, which comes from God. You know, this year has been so difficult for families due to the coronavirus. I think one of the saddest things about this is that over 340,000 have lost their lives without being able to be with their families, their loved ones, before they have passed. So many empty chairs. Grandparents, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, and even children have all been affected. I recall one elderly couple in particular. Both the husband and the wife were in the same hospital due to the coronavirus. As the wife lay dying, her husband was brought into her room for the last time before she passed. And the only thing that they could say to each other is that I love you. Less than one week later, the husband died in the same room. You know, the power of love is the key to the success of any family. I just saw on TV the other day where a hospital in Michigan has allowed one member of a family at a time who are suited up with proper protective PPE to visit a member of their family for one hour. Those who are suffering from the coronavirus, this dreadful pandemic. You would not believe the smiles and the love and the comfort which was expressed and it was truly indescribable. How sad that so many have lost their lives where an attending nurse was their surrogate family. Do you know what the one thing that families have missed having been affected with this coronavirus and have wished for the most? Hugging one another. And this is one way that love is manifested. Webster defines a family as a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. This year has seen so many isolated without the sustenance of their family. The celebration of Christmas this year has been unlike any Christmas that I can remember. The final point I would like to share with you today on this solemnity of the Holy Family is what we see and we view as we look upon the crush, the manger scene. Over the years, I have seen many outdoor decorations of plastic Santas, oversized and blown up reindeers, and even Yoda from Star Wars dressed up like Santa. But compared to all these displays, there are very few outdoor crushes or manger scenes depicting the Holy Family. Has society become so ingrained in the secular images of Christmas that they have failed to remember what the celebration of Christmas is all about? 
We must remember, my brothers and sisters, that amid all the lights and the decorations, the Christmas trees and presents, there was an event that took place 2,000 years ago that changed the world. It began with a simple and a humble family who were directed in their faith to travel to a city of Bethlehem where the miracle was to take place. Yes, my brothers and sisters, Christmas is a time for celebration and in giving. But have we as a society failed to remember the greatest gift that God has given unto mankind? I remember years ago seeing this quote, and it is true even to this day, that without Christ, there is no Christmas. I hope that we can all close this year, this sad year of 2020, and look for a new hope for the new year of 2021, where people will take stock of what is everlasting and meaningful, and to remember the love that overcomes and helps to make each family secure, whether it is the individual family, a parish family, or a family created by God. I would hope that on this solemnity of the Holy Family, we all could take but seven attributes that makes a family holy and successful and to implement to the best of each, or each person's ability to live these attributes in their lives and to form a more perfect family of God. Number one, to love more. Number two, to be more helpful to each other. Number three, to learn to forgive past mistakes by others. Number four, to be more respectful to the family. Number five, to seek for the unity of all members of the family each important unto its own. Number six, to worship God more deeply and humbly. And number seven, to have a greater concern for others outside of their own families. You know, St. John the Blessed Apostle in his first letter speaks of the dynamics and the power of the family. He writes, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a child of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. And finally, it was the late Reverend Dr. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, who one time quoted, Nothing can bring a true sense of security into the home except true love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, be God not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
for our sake. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. They took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, accept the sacrifice we offer in honor of the Holy Family through the prayers of Mary the Virgin Mother of God, and of her husband Joseph. Unite our families in peace and love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You sent us Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mother Mary, most holy. We have come to know and love you as our perfect Father, through the revealed mystery of your incarnate word, 
We praise you, Father, and through your Son now made visible, we long to be with you, our unseen God. And so therefore, on this most holy solemnity, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the homeless and the hungry, the unemployed, all those suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, along with their families. Let us keep in our deepest prayers and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us remember those who serve in our armed forces, and most particular May this day let us remember the doctors and nurses, the first responders and healthcare workers who fight daily for the sake of others. And finally, for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic exa example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the most sacred body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love. Draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily, and in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so grave for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you.
In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, O Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in an immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after the divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always crave, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all your saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it the peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. Who lives and reigns, God forever and ever. Amen. Partaking of your body, Lord Jesus, may it not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us a living faith fervent love worship adoration and a holy longing through this communion make us your willing servants zealous to fulfill your will may it at last unite us entirely with you our lord and our god grant us who lives and reigns with god the father in the unity of the holy spirit forever and ever amen i will take the heavenly bread and i will call upon the name of the lord Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return, return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
You are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servants whom I have chosen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, most loving Father, we desire to live as Jesus, Mary and Joseph, in peace with you and one another. May this Holy Communion strengthen us to live like the Holy Family and to face the challenges of life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lo, ho, 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 the sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I say to you, Happy New Year, and in this year of 2021, may it be better than what last year was. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of you in this new year, that God would bless you with health, happiness, and prosperity. We will conclude today's service with the offering of prayer, with the intentions that we have offered this day as well as for your own personal intentions. We will also remember in prayer and pray for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed. Before we offer that prayer, I would like to offer a prayer of healing and health for all those who are affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. And so, let us pray Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus and from all serious illnesses. For all who have died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring healing. For all the medical caregivers helping the sick, Strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread of this virus, grant them success. 
for those who are afraid. Grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. And by your grace, may you turn this evil disease into moments of hope. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy and place all these things in your care. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.